But Johnny, let's move on into our final topic. And what we are taking a look at is back on the Marvel side. Um, the Disney Fox deal is we heard that, oh, it should be done maybe by the earliest, the end of January. And we got excited. But now it is January and that is two weeks away. And now what they are saying is because of, I believe it's CAD or CAD is the acronym for it. This company down in Brazil. I believe they Something said. Something like that, I guess. I basically know. is taking a look at if it's fair on both sides. And now the earliest that, well, earliest and latest um, that it can be done is March. And that's what we're expecting. And we are knocking on wood. I am right now. Um, that this gets done and we get to see the X-Men in the MCU. Just sign it already. Sorry. But the interesting Sorry. thing that has come out this week or interesting in... My mind, per se, is that the movies X-Force, Gambit, and Doctor Doom yes. that were supposed to be in production by Fox have, been put on have now hold. been delayed. They have been reportedly shelved by Fox. So it says in this article, with the Disney Fox acquisition looming, films such as Doctor Doom, Gambit, and Deadpool offshoot X-Force have reportedly been shelved. The deal, which is not expected to be finalized but in, finalized by March, will result in the return of characters' rights, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, and all of their tie-in characters to Marvel Studios, allowing Kevin Feige and his team to use them in the MCU. So what I want to ask you, Johnny, mm -hmm. is with these movies, how should an X-Force, how should a Gambit, how should a Doctor Doom movie look under Disney or is this a fact of, will Disney look at it and go, <laughs> no, that was a bad idea. We're not doing that. They might do that for the Gambit movie yes, that's, at the that's start. The I was looking at. at the start, because they're like, we're not starting with a Gambit movie. If you're going to give me Gambit, give me a Gambit and Rogue movie. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah, that'd be better, because, I mean, then you got both of them for and one, too. And don't give it's me like, Channing Tatum as No, Gambit. don't. If anything, bring back the other guy that played it in the Wolverine movie. Yeah, the guy from Friday Night Lights. Yeah, I don't remember his name, to yeah. be honest. I think it's but, like Riggin, or no, Riggins was his name in Friday Night Lights, but go on. Yeah, no, um, I think they would, they might laugh at that one and say, no, we're not starting with a Gambit movie. Why would we do that? Why would we start with Gambit? You have so many others you can start, mm -hmm. get into Origin or whatever with. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if they did do that, yeah, probably a Gambit and Rogue movie, mm -hmm. um, but that one's one they probably would not start with, um... I'm actually starting my list from the bottom to the top again, like we mm -hmm. did in our last segment. Um, the next one would be they would X Force. They could po probably think like you know what, mm -hmm. since the Deadpool stuff is out there, the Will Wolverine is all well. That doesn't even really tie in, anyways. But it's like the since Deadpool movies are out there, we're gonna start an X Force now. Cable has sort of been set up because that's uh that was in pr with. Production with Marvel, wasn't it, at that what? point? Which one? Or were they considered in production with Marvel? Which movie? Deadpools. No. Okay. The well, Deadpools were Fox. Though they're not MCU affiliate. They're just in production with Marvel, the company mm -hmm. itself. Yes. That's why. I I was like, I didn't. I thought too hard about well, it when Mar I was, saw like, it last time. They've got to put Marvel at the beginning of it, because technically it's a it's Marvel, Marvel character, but yeah, it's not Marvel. it's a Marvel, Marvel movie, but it's, it's not, not MCU. It's not Marvel Studios, and it's not Marvel, the TV company, yeah. the t television. So they may go off of, like... Well, then it's it's up to them because like they were talking as if like yeah we want to keep Deadpool rated R mm -hmm. if they can, um, but the they so I mean I could see them doing an X Force one, and they may even like try if they were smart they would keep Ryan Reynolds because Disney is really good at picking who's best for the role. Mm -hmm. It's like hey Ryan you want to come finish Deadpool stuff with us and be part of X Force. And then bring back maybe they. I mean, they use Josh Cable, Bro Cable Josh Brolin as Cable, mm -hmm. and Domino. So they have all those characters set up already. Depending on what happens to Thanos, depending. Well, it doesn't mean we can't have Josh Brolin. I mean, Josh Brolin is Thanos, though. Yeah, but Thanos. Thanos is mostly CGI, though. Is most exactly. He's mostly CG. He's just. I'm, I'm just being an ass. I know. He's. It's just Brolin's voice, basically. Uh so. 
Uh, except for apparently, uh, he also does the, the caption motion, motion capture suit, mm-hmm. which funny to me. And um, but I mean, then the top one would be, well, Doctor Doctor Doom. Doom. That's the one I want to see. Like, yes. if any of these happen, give me Doctor Doom because I, we just talked about with Batman changing it up. Yeah, I've seen a Fantastic Four movie. I've seen Fan Four Stick. Yeah, give me something different. Give me a Doctor Doom. And if you want a cosmic thing, do something with Doctor Doom and like the Silver Surfer. Maybe if those two tied, it can tie together nicely. I would actually just do a straight up Doctor Doom movie. Mm-hmm. Give it the mysticism of Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. Give it the tech of Iron Man, and follow it all up with a tonality of. Um, uh, I almost said season two, but the mm-hmm. uh, phase two where everything was kind of darkish mm-hmm. and a little bit on the grittier, almost grittier side. Yeah. M- give me that. That's what I want to see. Do you Th- have to have Mixos- the Fantastic Four in his movie? Not if you're doing a somewhat origin movie. Okay. His uh, rise to power in uh, Lat- Latveria, I think it was. Latvia. Was it Latvia? I, I don't think, think it was so. Latvia. I think so. Uh, um, look it up while I'm talking. But I um, mean, like, that's what I would do is basically just like, cause if I, mean, I can do it without the Fantastic Four until start, maybe the end. Just give him his movie. Mm-hmm. And what I would say is like, because I think the reason he goes into mysticism and so mu- science so hard is mm-hmm. to the loss of his mother. You're right. Latveria. Yeah, it's Latveria. A fictional nation. Exactly. Just like Wakanda. Mm-hmm. Um. But I would say do that, bring them into, or bring that element into it and make him almost seem human until he starts to do some very drastic things. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, make us realize, oh, maybe he is the villain, blah, 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 Mm -hmm. per se. I mean, that to me is, that's the one that intrigues me the most. The second one is the Gambit one, I'll be honest. Yeah. Only because... Under Disney rule or under Disney leadership, yeah, it's not just a Gambit movie to me. I want like if I'm getting a Gambit movie, I want a Gambit Rogue movie. Where okay, it's basically a Bonnie and Clyde buddy cop com- comedic or rom com. It's all those thrown together. Like, give me the romance between um, LeBeau and um, Rogue. Give me the Bonnie and Clyde type ism that where it's basically. Them on the run. They've left the academy. They're off doing their own thing, much like we've seen in the comics with them. Yeah. And they're just doing their own thing, being mutants. But of course, their mutant life has a way of bringing things back to them. And plus their temperaments as well. Mm-hmm. Because they're not very, like, Gambit's not a very lay low type guy where he will for a little bit. But he's got that thievery guy in there. Exactly. Where he has that, like, where if you pick a fight with him, he's going to fight with you. He ain't going to back down from that fight. Like, and that's what I kind of want to see. The story revolved around them, not just Gambit. Because, like, the story that they were originally going to tell of, like, him with the LeBeau gang and, like, with the robberies in New Orleans, it didn't tickle my fancy. No. Much like a... Gambit Rogue movie would have. Yeah. Um, then I'm just wondering if Marvel would do that or if they would wait, introduce the X-Men, mm-hmm. and then split off movies and like, that's, oh, hey, we'll do a Gambit Rogue. No, no, no. That's what they will do. I'm just saying yeah. when I do get that Gambit movie, I want a Gambit Rogue movie. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying that I'm mm-hmm. wondering if they would wait, first do the... Um, X, like an X-Men movie, introduce mm-hmm. all their characters as the X-Men, and you don't need a origin for everyone then because this is like a little different whereas Mm -hmm. you needed like the origin of Iron Man needed the origin of Captain America of Hulk Mm -hmm. you don't need the origin of the X-Men because guess what we have it they were well we anyone knows and you can explain in the movie again they're born with these powers they are activated in teenage years Mm -hmm. from some sort of high stress Situation. I want to ask you this because this just popped into my head. Yes, sir. I think I've asked you this before, but I'll ask you again. If you're Kevin Feige, congratulations, Kevin Feige. God damn it, again. Um, <laughs> I don't like this dress. The X Men coming into the MCU. Are you recasting or are you keeping the first class class? Or basically the Dark Phoenix oh, saga class? Oh, that's hard to do because I mean. Or are you recasting and saying, nope, 
we are bringing in our own guys. For I this would almost and girls. say recast because if you can't get everyone, mm-hmm. it kind of screws things up. Because as of now, you're already not getting everyone because you're not getting Hugh Jackman, mm-hmm. which you already said. I don't. I don't count, say I don't count him. I in the do. First class. I do because they did introduce him. They threw him in on that one Weapon X part of the movie. What do you mean? When Jean Grey freed him, freed his mind just a little bit, and he ran into the wilderness. That was Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Was this in Days of Future Past? Yes. Okay. Okay. No, this is Apocalypse. Was it? That was Apocalypse. No. Wait. Yeah, it was Apocalypse because uh, they... They apocalypse apocalypse had Charles. They were locked in that base, mm-hmm. and they had to get out so they can go get Charles. This is exactly why my answer is recast because yeah, there's so you, Fox has muddied the water so much with it. Yeah, that it's just easier to say you've all been let go, and we are finding you. our own guys. Thank you for everything you've done. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Because also it comes down to if you keep that cast. Yeah. You're bringing all of that baggage with you, and Marvel's not like Marvel Studios is not that kind of a studio. They're they're, they're finally putting They like putting to baggage. do their own thing. Yeah, they like to do their own thing. Like exactly. Spider Man. Oh, you have Andrew Garfield, and no, you don't. We're bringing in our own guy. This guy Tom Holland. This is who we're bringing in. <laughs> that Andrew Garfield guy. Oh, you loved him. Doesn't matter. You're gonna love this guy more. Yep. We'll make you love this guy. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna love my slap chop. You're gonna you're gonna love my Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what I was going with with that. But I mean, that to me is what you got to do. Like yeah. recast the X-Men, re- start over from square well, like one. Like I said, basically. unless you can get every person that was part mm-hmm. of it to come back. And that's the real question is, do you count Wolverine? as? I don't count Wolverine do. as the first class. I count him as the old guard that just happened to bleed over because Wolverine's popularity was so high. He doesn't just bleed over. I mean, he's the only one that was sent back and was there mm-hmm. when they rebranched the timeline. Mm-hmm. He's the only one that was able to, so he's stuck no yeah. matter what. Uh, but no, I, the reason I count him is because they did throw him in there. They said, they like, oh, hey, by the way, hey, that, that's what you did when you did the Wolverine cameo, mm-hmm. is you set him in the universe. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to. You set him in the universe. But at the same with time, the cameo. you could easily, like, you could easily bring back everyone and recast him and really you can do it like we've talked about with the time because yeah, there's the time un- unless you're gonna stuff that's gonna go on it's just oh to us he's different but or to then them, like bring that if you're gonna do that br- mm-hmm. don't just do it to one person bring do about, it to all of them being bring half if you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna blame the timeline for messing mm-hmm. up some pe- or changing some people i'll be completely honest like but again which one like if you're if you're doing that now like we're gonna get into some muddy water. Yeah, here. who do you bring back? Because um, I'm looking like if I list off the cast, Sophia Turner, I would. Bring I back. would not bring her back. No, I would not. I honestly am not a fa- like the. I am so worried about her as Jean Grey True. in this Dark Phoenix. Like then that's another thing. I think Dark Phoenix is gonna be bad. I don't think it's gonna be good. I don't like. The, I saw an article yesterday that do you want to know what the reported rumored um, budget for the film for the Dark Phoenix film is? How much? Two hundred million after reshoots. Two hundred million after reshoots. That to me, maybe it's because I'm not in the music or not music the um. Film industry to where that doesn't seem like a lot, Mm -hmm. but just to put in perspective, X Men Apocalypse that budget was 178, so they spent nearly 22 more, 22 million dollars more than wow, Apocalypse. Then, if you go back to Days of Futures Past. That was one that was, all right, that was a $200 million one. Mm. And how good was Days of Future Past? That was not my favorite of the first class kind of um, X-Men movie that we've seen. And then X-Men First Class was between 
140 and 160. See, again, you know what? Just recast all of them. Because <laughs> John's like, I take it back. No, no. I, I agreed with in the initially, but I said if you were going to do the mm-hmm. timeline jump or like, hey, change one person, change a few of them mm-hmm. because if you're going to play it off that way. But then, again, unless you're going to go back before, let's just say before the 18, or early 1800s, because mm-hmm. if you're playing off the timeline, Wolverine was born in the early 1800s. So yeah, unless you're going to go back before that, True. it doesn't change who he is, which I doubt that. I think the po- farthest back they'll go is like 1944, 45 mm-hmm. or whatever. No, uh, whatever your captain went under the ice, like right before that. Mm-hmm. So anywhere from 42 to 45, I'll say. Also, here's is another, the farthest back they'll go. Here's another thing that Marvel Studios has to think of hmm. is... If you're going to bring the the same cast into the MCU, Mm -hmm. could you technically do it because of age? Where No. Think about it. Like, uh, Dark Phoenix is going to be set in the 90s. Mm -hmm. So these actors and actresses in a year would have to look 20 years older. Like, because Endgame is 2019. It's in present day. Yeah, there's two things that go into that. One is a different universe per se we'll Mm -hmm. just go along with that so i mean their age doesn't necessarily matter i think it does it does but it doesn't oh it does but it doesn't because people you don't want to do that because people are going to still reference back to it like we Mm -hmm. are Mm -hmm. and say well they were they were in these movies they were is the 90s and they're Mm -hmm. like they're still teenagers why are they teenagers here and people don't always realize well Marvel Fox is not the same as Marvel Disney until mo- March this year. Yeah, but that's a thing of like, what is like, what does Marvel want to do? I think it's easier just to recast, recast everyone. And Here, then here's something I want to bring them up. All adults that plays into maybe the X Force side, and this is the last thing yes. I'll bring up of what that movie could look like with Disney. There are rumors mm-hmm. that the Black Widow movie. Could be a rated R movie. Ooh! If that happens, does that that can only mean good things for Deadpool, right? Yeah, definitely. That Deadpool can survive as a rated R movie with Disney. Well, again, didn't the uh, top guy in the Disney, whoever it was, Liger. yeah, say he wanted Deadpool to stay yeah, rated last R? Last thing so. we heard from him is he didn't want to touch it. He's like, um, I want it to stay rated R. But from what this is going in is. So Charles Murphy, not Charlie Murphy, Charles Murphy Mm -hmm. from the Hashtag Show has now taken to Twitter to report a new detail about the Black Widow movie. He first heard rumblings of a Black Widow movie back in December 2017. And according to Murphy, Marvel at the time considering making it the first ever R-rated film. It's an interesting comment, although, of course, that's weird, although, of course... Um, of course, although it's difficult to substantiate, certainly an R rated Marvel Studios movie sounds unlikely given Marvel's emphasis on making family friended films. At the same time, though, there has been recent movement on this. Disney wants the Deadpool franchise to continue after the Fox acquisition, which may prove to be a game changer. There's also been speculation that Marvel could choose to launch a new brand akin to the Marvel Max or Marvel Knights imprints in the comics, and that rated R films could be distributed under that brand. So they're just going to sort of like make a rated R brand. Basically, like Marvel After Dark. (laughs) Oh, God, please don't say that again. It, basically, that's what it makes me think of, like Marvel, Marvel Adult, dark. <laughs> Marvel Adult. Like that's basically what you're pandering to is us older fans yeah. that now want that. Hey, violence. we can watch that. Yeah, we can watch it now. Mom can't tell me what to do. I don't live in her basement anymore. Um, but I mean, nope. I live in the <laughs> attic. I live, it is upstairs, not down there. Or from we don't even have a basement. No, or it makes me think of. Uh, I know. I don't think you've seen this TV show, but the TV show Sirens, no. where one of the characters was like, "Dude, you live in the basement." He goes, "No, I live in the loft. Separate le- or I live in a loft. Separate levels." They're totally different. No, dude, you live in the basement. No, 
They're different levels. I'm totally fine. <laughs> but this could only mean good things for a Deadpool, for an X-Force. Yeah. Because they can live on as rated R. R movies. Do you think then Doctor Doom would, like, going back to that, would you want it to be R or not R? I mean, you don't need it R. I feel like you need a. What would you prefer? I would say keep it PG-13. It doesn't okay. need to be. if you Because re- here's the thing. Save the rated R movies for characters that need to be rated R. Like Deadpool. Like Deadpool, like Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Finally got in his last movie. Widow would be fine in that realm. When well, you- just because of what has happened. Like, yeah. I want rated R for Widow because then show me everything that had happened to her. Yeah. Like, like the red show room. Me, yes. Show basically. me the whole shit with the red room. Exactly. That way I can actually get all that violence mm-hmm. and see like the full spectrum of the shit that went on. Of like why she was fucked up for so long. Exactly. Why she still call why she considers herself a monster in Age mm-hmm. of Ultron. Yeah. Um, but then we can see those things, but Deadpool needs to stay. Like Wolverine for his final movie, we finally mm-hmm. got rated R. Mm-hmm. And like it's like finally got a movie where Wolverine can be Wolverine and just claws out, hit a guy in the fucking head. Yeah, mm-hmm. so we can finally see that. No, I I saw that and I was like, cool. This so this is gonna mean good things for these Fox properties moving over. It's just gonna be interesting to see what exactly happens with them and really if this deal goes through because there's still that little bit of chance that it doesn't. And I'm crossing my fingers that it goes through because it brings me back to something that um, I think it was Kevin Smith Mm -hmm. that I watched a long time ago with him where it's basically – he's like the thing I would love to see goes any child of a politician should go to their father or mother and say, mom, don't stop this. We need this. Yeah. Because really it's politics of – Oh, and I I get it to a sense of like you don't want a monopoly being started and oh Disney would own most of the um entertainment sphere with both of these. Would that be so bad though? Give me what I want. Yeah. Like give me I want the all of Marvel under one umbrella. Exactly. And also I'll be completely honest, on the streaming side, that just means I buy Disney Plus and I get all the Fox movies too. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't have to buy yet another streaming service to get something else. Like, yeah. Disney Plus, I am so excited. I can't, I will be be paying for that one. I will be paying for that one. But I do want to bring a question to you after you're done. One second. Not only do you get all the Marvel stuff, the Disney stuff, you get the new shows. There's even a rumor that I don't know if you saw this. You know who's probably going to get their own Disney Plus show? Who? Sif. Oh, that'd from be cool. Thor. She's going to get her own Disney Plus show. If you don't introduce anyone else in the, or him in anything else, Beta Ray, introduce Beta Ray Bill in that one. Exactly. What was your question for me? Um, since we sort of got on that topic, what other Marvel characters could you see need like needing a rated R movie? Because like Iron Man doesn't need it. Daredevil. Cap- Daredevil. That would be a good one. Daredevil. Daredevil and the Punisher. Punisher. Not necessarily Luke Cage. I was thinking of like Just all through Darede- those. Daredevil and the Punisher are the ones yeah. that come. Especially the Punisher. No. If you don't do that rated you R, give, you did something wrong. Even if you give me a TV series that's like rated R. like It kind of was. Kind of, yeah. Um, I think pre- it was pretty rated. I don't know if it was rated R, but it was. It seemed like it was rated R. Trying to think what else. Um, yeah. If Here's an interesting thing. And you if could you say if me, you did this, you could say if, if you, you did the storyline, a Galactus movie, yeah, like just a movie about Galactus like invading Earth, mm-hmm. rated R. It, yeah. I would also love to see an entire X Men series that was rated R. You know what I would do if you did a X a rated R X Men series, which is mm-hmm. starting to sound really bad. I would also and love like I, I, we're gonna get this from Sony, but Carnage. Yeah. I know that's not Marvel, but I'm still going to throw it in there. It's affiliated with Marvel. Like, um, give me a true rated R Carnage movie. Yeah, but no, I was thinking um, if you did the X-Men storyline, do it when Beast goes rogue. Remember that one? Oh, yes. And get, like, super, like... Yeah, like, ro- super feral almost. Feral Beast. Yeah, exactly. That, that story, oh. or Feral Wolverine, one of those mm. two, where one of them goes feral, and then you just see the fucking carnage that happens when they can't control themselves. Yes. That would be a rated R storyline for the X-Men for me. Ooh. 
You get chills Ooh, too? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Just thinking of feral oh. beast. I want to pose that question onto you guys out there. What rated R, like what movies, characters don't we have rated R? That should be. That should be. I think that's our big Or kind ones of... that aren't out there yet that mm-hmm. should be rated R before they come out. Yes. So that's a question I want to pose to you guys to kind of put a kibosh on this because, God, that's one that we could even come back to and have a secondary kind of yeah. We might push that to the side put, and have a, second a one. secondary conversation. We should conversation. bring one, some, one or two other people on for that one too. Yes. That, that we know. I mean, that would be one where... So we can get off because there's the ones that I I'm mm-hmm. not thinking of that you're thinking of and vice versa. Mm-hmm. And there's one that we're both probably not thinking of that yes. you guys should tell us about too. Like, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm gonna go to the DC side. Of yeah, really go bit. for it. Give me. You brought up the Arkham Asylum thing yeah. earlier. Give me an Arkham Asylum movie that is a horror movie rated R. Rated R. That's what I want. Oh, here you go to add on to it mm-hmm. with multiple villains. Hugo at the top. Victor Zaz is one of them, and one or two others. I was going to say, if you give me a rated R Batman film, Victor Zaz, Zaz needs to be in that film. Zaz, Hugo needs Strange, to be. Mad Hatter. At least those three. Needs to be. I feel like the Joker has to be in that rated R movie, too. Maybe. He's got, like, can you imagine the Joker rated R? But I feel like if you have Hugo Strange at the top, not, running the and thing. I, and I'm not talking about that crap <laughs> Joker me. that we got Don't um, give me let in Suicide Squad. Yeah, that was his name. I forgot his name completely. <laughs> Um, give me like Heath Ledger Joker rated R style. Yeah, oh. give me give me his style. Oh, that is just. I but can't. I'm saying, I mean, you gotta either. I would feel like you gotta choose between Hugo Strange and Joker. Joker. You really? Yes. Okay. Like Hugo is you, nice. You give Hugo but Strange, Strange Hugo, a chance. Hugo is nice, but for rated R, Joker needs to be there. The only reason I'm thinking rated R, Hugo Strange, mm-hmm. Victor Zaz, Mad Hatter, and mm-hmm. a few others, is because you want. Hugo Strange wants to see the full extent of Batman's mentality. I guess. I mean, I just... I'm playing into the full movie aspect of it now. Yeah, I'm looking at it rated R. Give me what the Joker can bring rated R to that Save that when you have Jason Todd. Oh, 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 under the red hood rated R. Save my my rated R Joker movie. could you for imagine death in the family? Death in the family rated R. Save that Johnny for that. Johnny dropping bombs here. And that's where Johnny just. <laughs> I played hardball. Johnny just mic drops it to end. But this is where I, you I guys try, come but in. I can't drop this mic. Let us know what you think down below in that comment section about anything we talked about. Mainly that last one is the question I will leave you off to is what film and branch it out to any, anything. What comic book hero, villain, movie. Would you like to see rated R at some point in your life? Also, make sure to support us on Patreon. Make sure to rate us on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. Make sure to hit us up on Twitter, mostvalpodcasts.com. You can catch MVP each and every day. Make sure to do that. want to thank you guys for watching on YouTube. want to thank you guys for listening on podcast services around the world. And as always, have a good day, everybody.